station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? I'm ready for the event. USA Science and Engineering Festival. This is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Hello. Uh, Mission Control. This is the USA Science and Engineering Festival. You're loud and clear. How do you hear me, Capcom? And I've got you loud and clear as well. All right. Hey, Jeff, we see you floating up there right now, waving to the crowd. Yeah. All right. So, Jeff. Where are you right at this moment? Where's the space station? We're just heading up over the Atlantic uh, toward Europe. We just passed uh, south of the Bahamas prior uh, to that, right over the Panama Canal. I was out trying to get a picture of the Panama Canal, but as usual, it, w it was uh, pretty cloudy. But the Bahamas look beautiful as always. Aww. Okay, all right, so we, we got a little bit of misinformation. We thought that you had been there about 10 or 15 minutes ago and that you were further along. Is that possible? Uh, well, we crossed Panama about uh, 10 minutes ago, yes. All right. Now we're heading over the Atlantic Ocean toward yeah, Europe. Yeah, okay, got it. All right, that's great. And you're traveling, what, 17,500 miles an hour? That's right, 17,500 oh miles an hour, 90 minutes around the earth, 16 times a day. That's, we go what does it earth. feel like? Okay, now you, there's a delay in the communication. Okay. So, all right, so Jeff, I wanna introduce you to two Nickelodeon stars, Cree and Madison, and they're gonna take over the questions. And so I'm, I'm letting them know there's a little bit of a delay, so we'll pause after we, uh, after we speak. So first question. What do you miss most about Earth? Oh, of course, uh, what I miss the most is my family, uh, being away from my wife and my kids and my daughters-in-law and my grandkids. That's what I miss the most. All right, next question. What have you been working on today? Today was mostly a day off, however, I have been working on an experiment where we're studying uh, the uh, effects of weightlessness on, uh, it's a biology experiment, growing nematodes uh, and putting them under an experiment. It's a Japanese experiment, so I've been working with the SCUBA uh, Space Center in Japan uh, today and over the last several days, actually. That's awesome. Where's your favorite place to hang out on the space station? Oh, that's easy. My favorite place to hang out is in the cupola. I call it the window on the world. It's got seven windows. Where it's the only place on the space station where we can see the entire globe of the Earth. So oh it's a fantastic place to hang out. That's awesome. So today is your day off. So what do you like to do for fun when you're not conducting such important experiments? Well, uh, the cupola being my favorite place to hang out, I usually go there with a camera. And it's a camera with a big lens like this. So I love to take pictures of the Earth. Uh, the Earth is a, is a beautiful place, uh, never ending variety of uh, weather systems, of landforms, of ocean currents, of uh, uh, light conditions. Uh, so it's a great place to take pictures of. And I, I do that a lot in my free time. Okay, what's your favorite food to eat in space? Well, I've got lots of favorites up here. I like a lot of different kinds of foods, just like I like on Earth. Of course, we don't get fresh food very often, but we did last week get some fresh fruits and vegetables. And uh, when you haven't had those uh, for a while, those become your favorite, or at least among your favorite things. Awesome. What's your advice for some students here who have an interest in being involved in NASA and space? Well, of course, you're there because you have an interest in math and science and engineering and technology, and that's great. If you have an interest uh, and, and that's the, what you want to pursue, I would encourage you to work hard toward that goal. Uh, study hard in school. 
Uh, find out what doors open before you and, and enter. don't be afraid to enter those doors. And when you're shooting for something, when, you're, when you have a goal out in front of you and you maybe fail uh, on occasion to, uh, to progress toward that goal, don't give up. Uh, persevere and continue to work hard and, and go through those doors that open before you. All right. So as you know, we're here at the USA Science and Engineering Festival with hundreds of thousands of students who are interested in STEM. Okay, so from your perspective, why is STEM so important? Oh, wow. Well, if you look at the history of civilization, it really, uh, history, uh, civilization really blossomed, really grew with the advent of uh, science and exploration. It's called the age of discovery. And it's really because uh, the, uh, the earth is so observable and we can extract things from the earth that uh, we're able to use science and technology uh, and develop it uh, for the good of humankind. So it has made a huge difference uh, in history uh, for the people on earth. So it, that's why it's so important to continue that uh, exploration and discovery out of this world uh, that we see around us. Yeah, of course. Hey, Jeff, this is Greg here. Um, is it true that you took, on, on a previous space flight, is it true that you took a photograph of an erupting volcano that actually was not known until the moment that that image was sent down? Is that really true? Tell us that story. That's right. That was in May of 2006, and uh, there were only two of us on board, Pavel Vinogradov and I, and I was back in the Russian segment. I took a break, went back, and had a conver short conversation with Pavel. I think we had a bag of tea. Uh, we drank tea through a straw, and uh, I was coming back up here in the laboratory module to continue my work. I looked out the window. I saw the Aleutian Islands off the coast of Alaska, and I, I grabbed the camera, a camera just like this, and I started taking pictures of it, First one island, then the next island, then the next island. And all of a sudden, something didn't look right in that last one. And I went back and reframed the picture, and there was a volcano, brand new eruption. I could see the entire plume, it had just started. Uh, so I, I was able to take two or three pictures. One orbit later, 90 minutes later, I set the alarm on my watch to be back in the window to take some more pictures, and it was done. It had been, uh, uh, the eruption was complete. Uh, my guess is it only lasted 20 minutes or so. I had called Mission Control. They contacted the Alaskan Volcano Observatory. They didn't know about it yet. Um, so, uh, but they did uh, see the data later. Uh, so they, they verified the eruption. They also had some other satellite imagery that verified the eruption. Uh, to my knowledge, to this date, I'm the only one either on or off the planet that happened to see that particular eruption. So it was an exciting day for me personally. That's an wow. awesome story. Thanks, That's Jeff. Crazy. All right, ladies, do you, you have other questions? I, well, uh, well, what is the number one best thing about being in space? Oh, there's lots of nice things to be in space. I talked about uh, viewing the Earth. Of course, you can play with things, uh, doing things, doing experiments in a weightless environment, studying physics doing physics, practical exercises in a weightless environment is always a lot of fun. All astronauts turn to kids again. We love to play with our food and catch food in our mouth and whatnot. So there's all kinds of great things to do in a weightless environment. Is that, uh, is that like a 400 millimeter lens right there? Is that what that, that is? Or is it smaller? What size is that thing? No, this is a 400 millimeter lens. Uh, here's an 800 millimeter lens with wow. a doubler on it. It's bigger than the one uh, that what you know of when you were up here, uh, Greg. Um, but we've got a whole variety of lenses. We've got many, many lenses, everything from these big lenses all the way to, uh, to very wide angle lenses uh, to take all of the photography that we're uh, asked to do. And then, of course, all the volunteer photography that we uh, choose to do. All right. Go ahead, lady. How do you feel whenever you float? Like, what do you feel like? Does it, like, <laughs> how does it feel? Uh, it's difficult to describe. When you first get up here, you feel like everything inside your body starts to float. Your, your, uh, the, the organs inside your abdomen float up. 
your shoulders, your arms float up and you feel like your shoulders, you're shrugging your shoulders continually. Uh, then you get used to it after a while. It takes a few days and, and then you feel very comfortable, but I would say that it takes about six weeks to fully acclimate. And then you get to a, a point where there is no really logical up or down anymore. You can work in any orientation and in your mind you just make anything up or down uh, depending upon the task that you're doing. You learn how to how to move around with your feet. You don't need your hands to do it. Right now I'm, I'm hooking my feet in handrails uh, to uh, to uh, just kind of push myself around and catch myself and uh, so you get very accustomed uh, up here after a period of weeks. Wow. That's so awesome. Jeff, you first flew on the space shuttle in 2000. Yes, it is now 16 years later. So have you noticed any visual differences on the surface of Earth from your view? That's a great question. <laughs> That is a good question. We hear about that all the time. Frankly, I don't see a whole lot of difference. Of course, there's differences in the details. There have been uh, forestry operations and there have been changes in agriculture. Uh, there have been development in agriculture. There's been uh, fields that, that have left fallow. There have been earthquakes, of course, periodically that have caused damage. Uh, there have been storms that have come through, hurricanes that have come through and caused change. But all in all, I don't see a lot of change. Now, I do see changes over time. Uh, for example, when I first got here a few weeks ago, the entire Sahara Desert in northern Africa and half of Asia, the eastern part of Asia, was all full of dust storms and very hazy. Now it's cleared out again. So Africa is fairly clear and Asia is starting to clear out. Those things pop up every once in a while and then they, they go away. I think that's the nor normal cycles of, uh, of weather patterns and, and other phenomena on the Earth. So, two, two more questions. Ladies. All right. Two all more right, questions. Right. So pick your best last question. Okay. So what's the what does it smell like in the space station? <laughs> <laughs> like, what does it smell like? That's a that's a great question. Uh, uh, because right now I would say it doesn't smell like anything. It, uh, it's a very clean um, atmosphere. However, I will say when I first got here this time, the smell was very familiar to me, the smell of the space station. It's sort of a, a laboratory smell. Oh. I can't quite explain it. It's unique to the space station, but I found it was very strong when I first got on board. But within a couple of days, I acclimated to it, and I can't smell it anymore. And when I, asked, when I arrived on board, I asked my crewmates about it, and they said, oh, we don't smell anything, so you acclimate to the smells here. But I would say it smells it's sort of like a unique uh, laboratory. Oh, okay. Awesome. All right, so last question. <laughs> well, okay, for this round, but we got more after. All right. What is the most amazing thing that you've seen in space? Oh, man, there's a long list of amazing things I've seen in space. I talked about that volcano uh, before. I've seen uh, some amazing uh, views of the Bahamas, the reefs. I've seen amazing panoramas of mountain ranges uh, on the horizon or oblique angles or, or uh, seeing places that I live or have lived in the past are, are always emotionally very good because you, uh, it's exciting to see that. Uh, we saw a rocket launch a couple weeks ago. We saw a rocket launching through space. It was at, it was at night uh, and it was the progress launching to deliver us cargo. And we saw it way up uh, above the atmosphere all the way till the main engine cut off. That was an amazing event just recently. Wow, that's, that's awesome. That's great. Okay, well, Jeff, we have a huge festival here and 